Okay, good morning. Uh, we're back today. Today's coffee mug is the Mr. Thalner, Mr. Newman mug. Uh, this was taken on our trip to Cuba back in 2011. And um, the one of my favorite pieces of art joining us today is Robert Downey Jr. So this will help you to remember if you've seen this lesson or not. This is actually... Uh, one of my favorite pieces of my daughter Jenna's work, uh, individual squares, um, colored and painted individually. This took her a lot of time, and uh, she's actually got some big time offers on um, uh, selling this one, but uh, we just can't part with it. It's uh, it's just too nice. So Robert Downey Jr. is here. I'm here. You're here. Coffee's here. And if you've already figured it out, we're going to look at the microscope today. We're going to go through a very quick lesson that reinforces what we did on the PowerPoint and I'll be releasing some uh, extra assignments. So the last assignment you needed to do, I am going to um, get you to do that uh, individually. I won't be posting an answer key, but I want to review the parts of the microscope and talk about them a little bit because you may not have got that from uh, the reading that you did. So the way we're going to look at the compound microscope, I hope you can see it. It's kind of outlined in black here. I do this by hand. It's not the best diagram, but not bad. Uh, we're going to actually start at the top and kind of work our way down. Uh, first of all, if we were actually handling a microscope, the way we would handle it is with two hands. We're going to cradle that thing with the baby so that Mrs. Maskew doesn't get mad at us. Okay. Those microscopes are super expensive. And uh, the type that we're talking about, by the way, at school, we use what, what are called the compound microscopes. Compound microscopes. And you should notice that word co there. That's because we're cooperating uh, several lenses together to give us an, uh, an image. And uh, they're very expensive. They're expensive to service. So we want to make sure that we take really good care of them. And we handle them by the arm and the base. So one hand on the arm one hand underneath on the base. So uh, this is the arm. And F down here would be the base. It's all about the base. It's all about the base, about the base. Anyways, now that we have the structural pieces in place, let's go from A down and uh, review the pieces. So up at the top here, uh, part A uh, is actually called uh, the ocular lens or the eyepiece, the ocular lens or the eyepiece, it actually has a 10 times magnification. So it will magnify something 10 times bigger than it is to the naked eye on its own. Uh, this is a very creative piece here, part B. Um, you know, somebody looked at that and said, uh, we got this tube, uh, we got this big long tube here between the eyepiece and uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the, the lenses. Uh, I wonder what we should call it. How about if we call it the, 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 the tube? The tube. So we're just going to call that the tube. Pretty creative name for that. Uh, C, of course, is the arm. So that physical piece that carries it down. Then two pieces that are very important to talk about are the two knobs on the side. There's one that's larger and there's one that's smaller. The larger one is called the coarse adjustment knob. The coarse adjustment knob. And that's the one that you use when you're trying to find something on a slide underneath the microscope. That's the one that helps you to uh, target it, to keep it from uh, becoming blurry, and to help you to focus on the target. You always use that one with the smallest objective lens only. So the idea is you use the smallest, shortest power objective lens, which on our compound microscopes at the school are the four times magnification lens. It's the smaller one. Uh, I think it's uh, yellow, if I'm not mistaken, yellow or blue one. And uh, that's where you adjust it. And what it does is it actually ri raises and lowers the flat piece that the slide st sits on called the stage. So the course adjustment knob will lower that stage and will help you to find whatever it is that you're looking for under the microscope, uh, which isn't always easy. And um, that's where we always start. The second one, the smaller knob is called the fine adjustment knob. And what that will do is it will uh, bring things into focus. And that's the one that you use 
with all three of the different lenses. So once you've found your target, you can turn the revolving nose piece, which is right here, the revolving nose piece, and that will allow you to change the objective lens that you're looking at. And then you can use the fine adjustment knob, not the coarse adjustment knob. We want to avoid using the coarse adjustment knob when the medium or the high power objective lenses are in play, because if we um, crack, we can crack the lens or scratch the lenses by lowering and raising the stage if we're using the coarse adjustment knob. So we want to avoid that to keep from damaging or scratching the lenses or cracking the slides. So I've already mentioned on our compound microscopes, there are one, two, three different objective lenses. So these ones are called the objective lenses. And together with the eyepiece up at the top, they magnify whatever it is that you're looking for um, on your slide. The stage I've already mentioned is the flat piece. And these stage clips are actually really important. They keep your slide from moving around while you're looking at things. And they also help you to position certain parts of the slide in the right spot. So you need to have stage clips in place. Um, attached to the base is usually some kind of a light source. So down here, uh, in the old days, they used to use mirrors. And you know from the law of reflection that if they position the mirror in such a way at a certain angle, that the ray of incidence came in and would reflect up through the stage, uh, it would provide a light source. Now, sometimes there's too much light. Today we use electrical sources, so we use um, light bulbs and things like that. But I remember when I was in junior high school, we actually had microscopes that had mirrors. And I could never figure out, well, what's the point of this mirror? Why do we have the mirror? But positioning the mirror and adjusting the light is actually a big part of microscopy and using microscopes. Um, the way that we control the amount of light that enters is through a diaphragm, similar to the diaphragm in your um, in a camera or the iris of your eye. What it does is it allows a certain amount of light to pass through, up through the stage, through the little hole, and then in through the lenses to your eye. And then there's a condenser. So the other piece here for K is a condenser. And what that does, you can think of that as sort of being a light filter. So if um, the microscope that you have is equipped with a condenser, it'll help you to filter out the light and it kind of makes it softer or brighter depending on um, its, its positioning. So here are the parts again, the eyepiece, the tube, the arm, coarse adjustment knob, fine adjustment knob, the stage, stage clips, the revolving nose piece, the objective lenses, and at our school, the objective lenses are four times magnification, 10 times magnification, and 100 times magnification, which we hardly ever use, and, um, and a light source. The diaphragm, we already mentioned. So I'm going to carefully take this off without hopefully pulling out any paint off my wall. And we're going to quickly review. Bye bye. We're going to quickly review some of the key ideas with the microscope. So we went over the parts and there's two players that I want you to know the difference of. The first one was uh, Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So Anton uh, von Leeuwenhoek, he was the one uh, who was in about the, the mid 1600s. He was responsible for uh, developing early microscopes. The other guy was Robert Hooke. So we have Anton von Leeuwenhoek and Robert Hooke. They were both responsible for different things. Um, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, he looked at things like blood, pond water, and um, he developed this term animacules. And what he did was he named all the little single-celled organisms that he saw floating around in the pond water. He named them amacules. Hook is one of the guys that observed cork and under the cork he noticed that they had tiny rooms. So when he looked, whoops, tiny rooms. And he was the guy that actually came up with the word cells because the cork cells looked like their own little rooms when they were all together, tiny little compartments. And we give Robert Hooke 
credit for that. Anton von Leeuwenhoek credit for seeing the single celled organisms. And really he gets more credit as being the inventor of the more high powered microscopes. Which leads me to my next little, um, little thing for you here. Uh, in our school, we use what are called compound microscopes. So compound microscopes um, are called compound because they combine different lenses. So if you're using the low power lens, the magnification can be found by taking the little number on that objective lens and multiplying it by the ocular lens. So the ocular lens is 10. And if you were using low power, let's say the four, you multiply those together and the combined magnification is gonna be 40 times what you would see with the naked eye. These are really good for use um, in schools and in labs. You've probably seen pictures on uh, the internet or on the news lately with people studying coronavirus and they have the fancy ones with the two little, little tubes that come out and they combine. Those ones allow you to use both eyes. So those are more like binoculars. The ones we have at our school are uh, single tube uh, compound microscopes. They'll both get the job done when you need them. The second kind of microscope we don't have access to here. These ones here are limited and they give us about a maximum of 4,000 times multiplication. So if you used the um, 100 times, oops, 1,000 times the magnification. So if you use the 100 times lens and the eyepiece together, that's the most that you would be able to magnify an object. The other two lenses, the transmission electron microscope, I'm just going to abbreviate it with TEM. The transmission electron microscope is capable along with the scanning electron microscope, whoops, are actually capable of magnifying something up to 2 million times what you would see with the naked eye. 2 million times! That's a lot, lads. Like, think about that. That would be like taking my Def Leppard Pyromania t-shirt, blowing it up so big, 2 million times the size of this shirt, be huge. Anyways, Def Leppard, great band from the 80s. If you haven't listened to this album, Pyromania, I encourage you to do it. Fantastic. What's the difference between a transmission electron microscope and a scanning electron microscope? Well, first of all, transmission requires very thin pieces of dead samples. So because it shoots off tiny little electrons and then bounces them through the object, it has to be non-living material. So you could even take something like an insect, you'd have to shave off a very thin sliver. And in order to do that, um, it would produce a two dimensional, a 2D uh, slide or a 2D photograph. And you've probably seen those, those pictures of the uh, top uh, black, they look like black and white shots of insect eyes and things like that. Those come from very thin slivers of their hairs. A scanning electron microscope has a bit of an advantage because you can actually send samples that are still alive. So you could have things swimming around in pond water, live samples of unicellular organisms. You could hit them with a scanning electron microscope and it would create an image. And better yet, the image has almost a three-dimensional effect to it. So you get an idea of not just a flat surface, but also the shading and that type of thing. A little bit different view of the structure. So this is our review on the microscope. I'm going to be posting the rest of your assignments for this week. Uh, most of them will carry you through the weekend. So the last one that you had was the diagram of the microscope. A pretty easy 24 mark assignment. Try to get that done. Label the parts 1 to 12, just like I showed you, and um, use that uh, diagram that I did today. Um, there's going to be a package of reading attached to this assignment, and there'll be an assignment that goes along with it as well. It's probably going to take you a few days to read through it, so keep on handing in your assignments, and uh, I'll be posting answer keys as we go. 
If you have any questions, make sure you email me. I hope you guys have a great day. And from me, Robert Downey Jr., Mr. Thundermug, Def Leppard T-shirt. That was easy. Have a great day.